All right, in this short video, I'm going to be going over a full MHD tutorial on a N55 BMW. So let's get straight into it. All right, so I've already done a full video on actually how to map it on your phone. So I'll leave that in the top right hand corner if that's something that interests you. But in today's video, I'm going to be going over what every setting does and explaining it to you guys in detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug my MHD adapter into my OBD port and we'll go from there. All right, so as you can see, it's plugged in. We've got a little amber light on down there. So that's all you want to make sure of. All right, so once you've made sure that's on, you can go ahead, turn your ignition on. You don't want to start it um, or anything like that. You can kind of turn your blowers off and just put your lights down so that they're not draining the battery. But as long as your ignition's on, then you're pretty much all set to go. Okay, so once your ignition's on, you then want to go into your phone and pretty much just connect to your MHD adapter. And then when you've done that, you can open the MHD app. So mine just automatically goes onto the live data screens. That's what I've set it to. But this is what you'll be greeted with when you have opened the app. So we'll just get straight into it. We're going to keep it simple today. We're just going to do flash MHD map. We're not going to do any of these because they're pretty complicated. And I want to keep this to the point so you guys can understand. So we'll go straight into here. It's just going to take a second to load and just connect to the car. So we'll just give that just a second to work itself out. All right, so I'm hoping that you guys were able to see this screen. I've turned off the lights in the car to hopefully make it clearer for you guys. So there's going to be a few things we're going to start with. We're going to work top to bottom. So the first thing is we're going to select what transmission we're running. In my case, my car's manual, so I'm obviously going to select the manual transmission. If not, you can select, obviously, the ZF 8-speed auto box. So stage zero, that is basically a stock map where MHD remains in store, installed on your car, for example. There are other ways you can remove MHD completely and just have it completely base car map as if it came out of the factory. So you can do that if that is needed. Stage one, it's pretty simple. You're just going to select what kind of fuel you want to be running. Um, obviously, if you're going to be just mapping on a stage one, you're not going to really be bothering about E20 or E85 fuels. You're probably just going to be staying around the 91, 93 and 95 octane. In my case, I run mine on Tesco Momentum, so that's 99 octane, so I would obviously select the closest, which is 95. But obviously, stock or stage one is just for stock cars, so no exhaust settings, nothing like that. It's basically an unmolested vehicle. You can just do a stage one map on it. Stage two, now a downpipe is recommended. You don't have to run it, but obviously it is recommended because if you're going to run burbles, or up your pop and bangs, which I'm not really the biggest fan of, then you're just going to damage your catalytic converter. So that is obviously an upgrade which could be necessary. Stage 2 plus, which is what I'm running on my car, you have to have, you do have to have upgraded um, downpipes, and a front mount intercooler is recommended. Um, I do have one of them, so I'm pretty much all good in that department, but I, I would select. If you're going to, if it's saying recommended, I'd definitely invest in the money to get it done because it's just going to increase your performance and help the reliability of the tune. Stage two, a little bit of further away from me because I don't have a high pressure fuel pump yet. That is something I'm going to be looking at in the future. And obviously stage two hybrid, that's with all upgraded turbos and stuff like that. So pretty much if you're just having a pretty simple map, you'll be staying away from that. However, if you've paid for the full MHD one, the proper all singing, all dancing one, then you're going to have this at the bottom, which is the MHD multi-map, which I find is really good because in some cases when I'm doing long journeys, I don't want to be in an aggressive map. I just want to be cruising along, trying to get some decent fuel economy. So this is why I find this setting to be the best, which is what I'll be covering in today's video. So in my case, I'm going to be running stage two plus because that's what I've got the supporting mods to do so. If you were running stage one, you could select that or stage two. That's just an example. So my map slot one, basically how you change the maps, if you were to look on your RPM gauge, 1000 RPM is map one, map two, map three, map four. It's literally as simple as that. So that's how you've got some sort of indication on the car itself. So map one, I'm still running my higher octane fuel as well as in map two, as well as in map three and map four, because that's all I run the car on is the highest octane that I can. However, on map four, I brought the power down to 60% because I found that if you run a 60% map, which is about 220 brake in these cars, 
you do get pretty decent fuel economy, which is pretty handy. So I do run that on long trips. Map three, which we can go into in a second, is obviously still 100% power and 100% power on map two and the map three. So they're all the same. So if you click on this little arrow here, it's going to bring you into more information on these maps themselves. So we're not going to be clicking map right today. We're just going to be clicking on this option where it says exhaust burbles. So here is what we're going to be going through everything today and me trying to explain it to you best as possible. Okay, so we're going to be ignoring the top one because that's irrelevant for today's video. So anti-lag, I'm sure you've heard about this before in the car scene. It's pretty renowned out there. Um, I'm pretty sure on the B58, so in the M140i's and 240i's, you can run 16 PSI of anti-lag. Whereas in the M235i, you can only run about 12 PSI. So that determines what you can run for anti-lag. So you can only hold it down for about 5 seconds. It's got a cooldown time of 12 seconds, so you can't be spamming it again and again and again. And there's a tiny little delay there, which you can see. So that covers the anti-lag. And to do that, you hold the reset button on your steering wheel while your throttle is obviously kind of halfway planted, if that makes sense. No lift shift. This basically means that you can change gear without coming off the throttle. However, this is only between 5,000 RPM and 7K. You can change that to be between whatever you kind of want to set it at. Obviously, I'd, I'd really use this anyway. Apply a more linear throttle mapping. Um, I've definitely clicked this on because it just provides a more smoother map. It's not as jerky, you know, when you're in first gear and stuff like that. It's just a really smooth uh, map, which is, in my opinion, one of the best you can run. Aftermarket downpipes. Now, I've selected yes because that's what I'm running. If you're on stock, then you'd select stock downpipes. Remove the top speed limiter. I just clicked that as yes because why not? And increase eye drive power and torque gauges. So if you were to go onto your screen, you can see here, if I go back onto it, vehicle information, you'll be able to see that my sport displays have gone up from stock. So 480 to 720 new meters. That's not what I'm reaching, obviously. That just shows you can upgrade the dials to be a little bit higher. So you can change that. If you unclick that, it'll be back to the stock ones. Disable, disable start stop. I clicked that off. Well, on, sorry, because it's the most annoying thing in the world. The overrun brap. So I'm sure you've heard this on the OGM2 before. It's just kind of what it does. It just spools a turbo while you kind of let off the throttle and just makes this... I can't really describe it unless you've heard it. But I'm not the biggest fan of it. I run it for a while and I got a bit bored. So I just put it back to OEM where it doesn't happen. Exhaust burble. Now, I do have these on in my map one. However, they're only kind of... Literally, I haven't touched them at all from what MHD came on my phone. I've kept them on for a minute, a second... And I've set them on to be soft because I don't really want burbles too loud while I'm in sport in my just normal map that I'm running day to day. And I've just clicked minimum RPM they happen at is zero and the maximum is 7k. And you can select the max speed they happen at or a minimum speed. So that's completely up to you. Cold start noise reduction. I've turned this on because my car and startup is just ridiculous and it annoys my neighbours. So trying to get on their good side, I've turned that on, which is really handy. Exhaust flap always open in sport mode. If you still have a back box, you can turn this on. However, I have no back box, so this is irrelevant to me. Startup raw, I turned that off as well because it basically means whenever you start the car, it will rev itself about to about 1500 2K, but it's just a bit loud if you're just at a petrol station and it just draws attention to you unnecessarily. Now, limit power by gear. This is something I found quite handy. I've turned it down to about 92% in first gear because you just spin the wheels. In a rear-wheel drive car with like 400 brake, you just spin the wheels. And then I've got obviously 100% in all the other gears. Here we have, this is just sensors. So I've just kept these kind of stock. Obviously ignition coils are stock. Um, high pressure fuel pump is still OEM as well as injectors are still stock. You can change them if you're running different ones. Same with the high pressure fuel pump. You can select what you're running on that. So it's completely up to you. But I'm just selecting stock on all of these because these are all stock on my car. Coolant target. Now this is something which is quite interesting. My car used to run at about 108 degrees Celsius, 110 on this stock one. As soon as I selected the Sport, it brought it down to about 95 degrees Celsius. 
Now, what this does, because these N55s have a electric water pump, you can control the speed that that obviously spins and pushes the coolant through your system. So if you put it in sport, obviously it's spinning faster. It's cooling the engine down quicker. And on track, it's cooling it down even more. You'd be at about 85 degrees Celsius. However, your water pump is working a lot harder than it would have originally. So I've just kept mine in sport, which is kind of a middle ground. Just keeps my temperature below 100 degrees. Um, and then when you're giving it some, it creeps over ever so slightly, but it's not too much. Port injection and meth. Obviously, this is like big stuff where you're running like proper power. So you wouldn't need to worry about these at all. And the reset and freeze flash counter. I'm not too sure what that was. I have Googled it. But if you guys know, then please leave a comment because I still haven't fully worked that out what it is. So that's just the main one on the main page. Thankfully, the map 2 and map 3 and map 4 aren't as crazy. So map 2, this is the only map where I actually have burbles on where I want them. So if I wanted to like show my mate or something that the car shoots some flames or whatever, then I could select this map, which I can just do by selecting on the screen ahead. I've put these on to about 0 0.2 seconds and on hard map 3. I wanted no burbles at all, so I've turned them off completely. I just put them as OEM style because sometimes you just want the exhaust note in sport with no burbles at all because you just want to just cruise around having a bit of fun with no pops and bangs. And then map four is obviously the same. This is my 60% power map, so I'm only getting about 220 odd brake. And obviously, I didn't want any pops and bangs on that either. So that is how I've set up my car. And obviously, once you fiddle around with all those settings, you can then press map right, which I've done in another video. It'll also give you an overview of what you've selected fuel-wise and what power for each one. But obviously, I'm not going to be flashing it now because you want to do this with a battery charger connected. And I've sat in the car for about five minutes draining the battery, so it wouldn't be wise for me to do it now. You can also change your octane to be RON if you wanted to, but it, this doesn't really do anything because it stays the same. It just shows the octane changes on there or... You know, it's Octane or Ron, it's completely up to whatever you want to decide. But that's pretty much this whole MHD tutorial. There's a load more on the app you can do. There's many things you can do. I can show you how to flash it back to stock. Um, base maps, you've got other maps as well. You can do like a back-end map or a custom map from an actual tuner itself. You've also got like your data logging screens. Uh, you can read codes, for example. And you've also got your live data when the engine is running. Um, but these are all things I can cover in another video if it so happens that you guys want to see more videos on this. I mean, I just clicked on read codes there and you can see I've got one code, which is to do with my catalytic converter because obviously I'm not running a cat. Well, I have got a sports cat in, but that's what we'll tell everybody. But if you guys did enjoy the video, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you want to see more content like this, then I can definitely produce more for you guys. Just leave a comment below of what you want. And I'll do my best to answer it. Apart from that, I appreciate you guys watching the video. I hope some of this helped you out in some way. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.